Many of you out there might think athleticism is not trainable and that athleticism is what we're either born with or born without. And we're going to dispel that today and we're going to talk about how you can train athleticism and how it is trainable. I'm also going to get back to doing a lot more vlogging, it's kind of taking the summer off and pumped out a lot of different types of content, but I love vlogging and I want to get back into um, from my mindset with this vlog of speaking to you guys as a team. I want to foster a team, team couriers, and I want to take you through winter. You know, it's, <laughs> you can see the trail and the mountain behind me. That's where I'm going to run today. and I'm going to take you along, but we're kind of mid November and we're in El Nino year, which typically means that it's going to be a warmer and drier winter. We had a really wet summer and that usually shifts. So last year at this time, we had over a foot of snow on the ground. And this year it's completely bare, still seeing the grass, still seeing the dirt. And I wanna get out for one more, maybe a couple more uh, trail runs before kind of the, the snow does come and it'll come. But I wanna kinda of take you through that transition, show you Jackson Hole and do a lot more vlogging and speak to you guys as a team. For me, it's never about clickbait or trying to have as many viewers. I, I want to just work with you guys and, and foster a team atmosphere and speak to you guys like a team. I think there's great um, performance gains and camaraderie that comes from working within a team. And that's kind of what I want this channel to be in these vlogs. I'll be doing other types of content that might be more for promoting books and um, other things that um, that kind of come along with just kind of marketing books and how you market your business, right? But I want these vlogs to be for you guys and for us as a team. So with that, um, we're going to go on a run, talk about athleticism, how you can foster athleticism with any type of uh, running that you're doing. And before I forget, before we head out, next Friday, November 24th, Chris McDougall and I are doing a free viewing of the movie Run Free, the true Caballo Blanco story. We're going to do this at 8 p.m. Eastern Time on Zoom. You can get the Zoom link. I'll go to our website below. See that in the description. And the first 100 to attend gets in free and we're going to have an interactive Q&A chat session and, and have a whole lot of fun while we all watch the movie. Here's a little clip to kind of give you a, a little taste of what the movie's all about. While there at war, we come together to make peace here in the bottom of the canyons. For days, I've been searching Mexico's Sierra Madre for the Phantom, known as Caballo Blanco, the white horse. The legendary Caballo Blanco, he came looking for the the runners long time ago. So I ran with the Raramari in the Leadville 100 mile race in Colorado. That was my reason to start coming to the Copper Canyons of Northern Mexico. That's Micah True. True was a long distance runner made famous by Christopher McDougall's nonfiction bestseller, Born to Run, a hidden tribe, super athletes, and the greatest race the world has never seen. Well, I remember um, as a child just running around for play and running free. Most boys in California, you know, they want to be the tough John Wayne. They want to be the cowboy. He was Geronimo. He told me that he ran a lot when he boxed. He was just a guy wandering around pretty much in his old truck, the dog. But somehow <laughs> or another, he was able to create opportunities. He wanted to do something to encourage their Raramari to continue to run free. So I uh, decided I would make a foot race. Anybody who finishes the race wins 500 pounds of corn. Micah True's body was found Saturday in a remote area near New Mexico's Gila National Forest. He had vanished four days earlier, heading out for a morning jog. Somebody's got to take the baton and do something beautiful with it. It's a relay now. tough part about having trails so accessible is your your first mile warm-up is about a 250 foot climb so you got to take it super easy new home going up Hello. 
recording. Man, it's so warm. I'm totally overdressed for November. And down there is the hood. My half a mile big climb that's not really warm up, but it has to be the warm up. So how the heck is athleticism trainable? Well, we have to look at what true athleticism is and how we make improvements as athletes. In the Cool Impossible and Born Run 2, the main component of the entire message is athleticism is awareness. And what does this mean, athleticism is awareness? It means it's trainable. And the most important thing when it comes to skill and athleticism is muscle memory, repetition. So a lot of times, the most important ingredient for athleticism is self-discipline, is frequency, is consistency. That's all under our control. Got to go into the road to get to the other side of the road. As soon as we get over here, it begins dirt. And here we are. The most important thing when it comes to athleticism is skill. And we can train skill. At the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a really potent exercise that demonstrates not only good strength, but what we're talking about right now of creating muscle memory. So stay tuned for that. But going back to self-discipline and how that equates to improving athleticism, repetition, muscle memory, is that when we have self-discipline in doing what we want or know we need to do relative to our goals, therefore every moment of the time, regardless of our situation, can feel like a form of training, which feeds on itself, which gives us really, really good confidence. When we lose confidence is when we lose the ability to feel like we have control over a situation. So for example, you're traveling, your life takes you out of your routine. You can visualize. You can practice visualizing how you want to perform. You can eat well. There's all these things we can do throughout our day, regardless of our situation, that helps us have self-discipline that continues to allows us to feel like we're training and striving towards our goal, even though, again, life might try to take us out of that routine. Most training techniques focus on the, the physical, but if muscle memory starts with our brain, we can view our brain just like a muscle, just like we view muscles in our legs or our heart for cardiovascular training or strength training. So we can train our mind. This is another form of training your athleticism. Just as you might have awareness around your form or a certain exercise or a certain workout, we need to have awareness of what we're telling our brain and our thoughts and see our thoughts as just an opportunity to be the runner we want to be. And realizing, most importantly, just having the awareness of our thoughts in itself stops our thoughts and makes us contemplate and it's not important what you think it's important what you do after you think that's athleticism all right we're going a and w to wilson canyon might be a little muddy i was hoping to get out early enough where it wouldn't be muddy still a little frosty but it's too warm regardless of when i went out um, we're going to just traverse the mountain and go up into Wilson Canyon for a little bit and uh, really enjoy almost this late summer temperature. Athleticism is having the awareness of how you're using your feet when you run. At my camps, I tell my athletes, 
run with your feet, not your shoes. And that doesn't mean you take your shoes off, but you have the awareness of using your feet and striking the ground a certain way so you use your muscles appropriately longer and longer and longer, leading to muscle memory. That's how you can train athleticism. Right down there is home. We got, we're, <laughs> we're about a mile in. Things are good, feeling good. Getting up early and getting your run in before work, before the kids get up. That's athleticism. That's training athleticism for frequency and consistency. All under your control. Sometimes doing the repetition in the things we don't like to do or don't want to do because we might not feel very good at it. Well, that's going to train our weakness. That's going to get us better. That's improving our athleticism. That's a choice. And going into the winter months is the best time to work on your weakness. So let's go. The trails are so nice. So much drier than just a few days ago when it was actually colder. So maybe thinking of athleticism is a form of practice that can help your mindset. It's not something we're born with. Elite athletes practice, professional athletes practice. That's what athleticism is. Being your best is just a choice. It, just, it doesn't get any better than this. It's almost too warm. Could have gone shorts and t-shirt. Uncrazy. Unbelievable. We're approaching Wilson Canyon up here. Gonna, another big climb. Another crucial component to training in athleticism is to have patience. Having patience through the training phase, through the season, year to year, or like me right now, I've got a long climb, I've got to stay patient. If I'm not patient, I start pushing it. If I start pushing it, I'll have diminishing returns. So if you find yourself getting frustrated, sometimes that means that frustration is coming out as a form of being impatient. And as soon as you practice patience, that frustration diminishes. So use frustration as a guide for when you might be impatient. A smart athlete is a patient athlete. An elite athlete is a patient athlete. Patience breeds athleticism. Speaking of practice, muscle memory, and how we can train athleticism, what's one thing we can do to physically and mentally train this? To train our awareness and to train run-specific strength. Many of you out there might be doing lunges to help your strength for running. You're probably making the mistake of making them too deep. That's not functional range of motion for running. When we run, whether we're a sprinter or an ultra marathoner, when we land or strike the ground, our range of motion is not that great. Again, it's the same whether you're a sprinter or an ultra marathon and anywhere in between. So we don't need to get deep. What we can do is really challenge our neuromuscular pathways that will train our awareness and train our functional run strength with my exercise, the running lunge. So try this. The run lunge packs a punch. This is a very controlled movement. Reach back and bring that knee up as high in front of you as possible. 
And the key is to activate the glute of the stabilizing leg and go straight with that leg. Come up straight and lock that leg out. That's your stabilizer. So we're working the stance leg and make sure you extend that leg up as straight as possible. And be sure to sequence your arms in a running motion as you perform. And as you do this, remember, we're training your awareness to be able to perform this movement through time to get better and better and better. It might be super, super challenging at first, but see that as a good thing because that's gonna train your muscle memory. That's what we're aiming for. That's gonna train your awareness. What you're having to do in this exercise is no different than what your brain has to tell your body while you're out running. So if it's challenging to do this in a run lunge environment, your brain is challenged while you're running. So first and foremost, see this as athleticism, practice and awareness. And then as you get better and better and better, the strength gains, the muscle memory, the muscle endurance, you're training that brain to fire muscles in a certain pattern that are good and functional for running will take hold through time. You're going to use your glute better. You're going to activate your glute better. Again, most runners don't lack strength. They lack neuromuscular strength. And what this means is that they're not firing muscles in an appropriate way or appropriate pattern. So try it out.